In tonight's WGN Investigates, for decades, the U.S. government has issued thousands of recall warnings for everything from tires to car seats. So you would think that the agency in charge of issuing those warnings would comply and fix any issues with its own fleet of cars. Guess what? That's not always happening. The man you're about to meet wasn't driving a government vehicle, but does want his story to serve as a warning. These days, 28-year-old Tyler Meyer prefers the passenger seat. Find a better parking spot. Anytime I'm at a gas pump, I can still revisit that. It seems like that day kind of will come up on my mind. It's been six years since these pictures and the car accident involving the now infamous and recalled Takata airbags. The metal piece was removed from my cheekbone right here. It was, it was almost like a fish hook shape piece of metal. After three days in the intensive care unit, Tyler went home to weeks of recovery and a piece of mail that explained a lot. As soon as we seen the recall notice, we knew that there was something going on bigger than just a normal car accident. Tell me about what happened at the ER. Tyler's attorney, Brian Lacine, says in all 2.9 million vehicles were under a recall notice. In the U.S., 17 people died. It's the largest automotive recall in the United States. It's resulted in $1.5 billion. Unfortunately, still cars on the road that have Takata airbags. That means what happened to Tyler could happen again. To avoid it, lawmakers at the nation's capital put the spotlight on all sorts of vehicle recalls. I am introducing the Used Car Safety Recall Repair Act. All of it in an effort to make sure recalls are taken seriously. Hundreds are issued by the federal government every year, but only about 60% of recalled vehicles get repaired by the general public. And here's where things get even more complicated. Two Illinois lawmakers, Jan Schakowsky and Raja Krishnamurthy, want the federal government to take a long, hard look at its own fleet of cars and the recall orders those vehicles are under. To think that our federal employees or even people who are commissioned to protect us might be driving these vehicles and that these vehicles could be repaired at no cost to the taxpayer um, is really galling. The Center for Auto Safety estimates that as many as 25,000 federal vehicles are under a recall order that has gone unaddressed. Not only are these recalls not being repaired, but some of these cars are being sold to the public. No other auction boasts the same proximity to as many customers as GRAA. Which takes us to Rockford, Illinois, and the Greater Rockford Auction House. It has lots full of cars. WGN Investigates found that over the last few months, five different government vehicles were sold at that auction under some sort of recall order. One order goes back to 2017, a transmission lock issue on a Ram pickup truck. Now, to be fair, the auction house does mention that the vehicles have an open recall before selling them. Why do you say that that's not good enough? Why do you think that more needs to be done? Sure. So we start with we should certainly hold the federal government to a higher standard than maybe a disreputable used car salesman. Which takes us back to the nation's capital and those two Illinois lawmakers. Schakowsky and Krishnamurthy have introduced the Safe Cars Act, mandating that any federal vehicle under a recall be fixed before it's driven by a federal employee and before it's sold. For someone like Tyler, who knows he could have lost his life due to a recall, it's surprising that legislation is needed to address what should have been done all along. I would say that it would spare a lot of people um, some trauma. Okay, and repairing the federal fleet wouldn't cost taxpayers any money since it is at the expense of the automaker. It would, however, require some coordination by the General Services Administration. The bipartisan bill has to make it out of the Oversight Committee. First, no timeline, I, uh, timeline on exactly when that would happen. So 